Hi everybody, welcome to Sukh Vibes. In today's video, we are going to cover 28 questions related to the topic goods transport and this falls into the main topic of driving solar motor vehicles and trains, transporting passengers and goods. Let's begin. What must you be aware of if you want to transport a load? The load may not interfere with me. This is clear that while driving, load should not interfere with you. It should not keep on flying around when you are driving. May not slide even when I brake. Yes, the load should be fastened. May never project over the front of the vehicle. This is actually wrong. Up to certain limits, the load may project over the front of the vehicle. The first two options are the correct ones. Let me also show you here. Loads must be secured in such a way that they cannot slip, fall over, roll back and forwards, fall down or cause avoidable noise, even in an emergency brake situation. This applies also to all vents. So these are things that you need to consider while carrying load. How must a load be marked in darkness or bad visibility when it extends laterally more than 40 cm beyond the side lights of the vehicle? So by red light to the back and by white light to the front. By switching on the hazard warning lights, no, hazard warning lights are for the emergency situation. But for the load markings, you have to use red and white light. Let me show you in the ebook. In the dark, a load that projects beyond the side marker lights by more than 40 cm must be made identifiable by a white lamp at the front and by red lamp at the rear. The lamps may no longer be higher than 1.50 meter above the carriage. This is depicted here. For example, if the load is going to extend more than 40 cm, then it should be made identifiable. And how you can do it? By putting white lamp at the front and by the red lamp at the rear. What do you have to make sure of regarding the load on your vehicle? My vehicle may exceed the gross vehicle weight rating by maximum of 5%. There is no such rule. My vehicle may not exceed the gross XL weight rating. This is clear. I have to use suitable equipment to prevent the load from shifting. Yes, you have to fix your load. What must you check when transporting bicycles on a rear mounted sport system? Whether lighting equipment or number plates are covered. Yes, you have to show that your lighting system are visible from the rear and the same holds for your number plates. Whether according to the manufacturer's instruction, the system is adequate for the vehicle. If you're using rear mounted sport system on a car, you have to make sure that this system is adequate for the vehicle. Whether system and bicycles are fixed safely, yes, this is for your safety as well as for others that your system, your rear mounted sport system and your bicycles should be fixed safely. What must you reckon with when transporting luggage on the roof of your car? If you're transporting luggage on the roof of your car, let me show you here. The load, an average car can transport a load of approximately 400 kg. The handling characteristics change considerably as the weight increases. If the weight increases due to load, then the handling characteristics also changes. The acceleration capacity decreases and the braking distance becomes longer. Now looking at the options. The vehicle's susceptibility to side wind is greater. This is clear. The vehicle's road handling is improved on the count of higher center of gravity. No, the vehicle's road handling is negatively impacted. The vehicle's inclines more on the bends. This is also clear because of the weight on the car. What is the maximum height allowed to above the roadway for red light marking a load extending to the back? Now, if your load is extending to the back, for example, like this, as from one meter, the projecting load must be made identifiable in the day by a bright red sign, a bright red flag, or a cylindrical body, in the dark by red lamp and by a red reflector. Devices for securing the load may no more than 1.50 meter above the carriageway and the reflectors no more than 90 centimeter above the carriageway. Since in the question we are given a red light, so it should be placed such that it should not be more than 1.50 meter above the carriageway. So the answer is 1.50 meter. What is the maximum distance a load may project backwards beyond the rear reflectors without a projection marker being necessary? So this is what we have already read. Only from 1.00 meter, the projecting load must be made identifiable. So if your load extends beyond one meter, then you have to make it labeled. So the answer is one meter. So what does it mean? That if your load extends beyond one meter, then you have to use a projection marker, which could be a red flag, a red signal, a red light, a cylindrical body. And the height of that should be no more than 1.50 meter above the carriageway. What should be noted when loading vehicles? Loads more than 2.50 meter high may not project forwards by more than 50 centimeter. I will show you this in a minute. Loads that project beyond the retro reflectors by more than one meter must be labeled. This we have seen in the previous question. If your loads are projected beyond the retro reflectors more than one meter, then you have to label them by using 
red lamps, red signals, red cylindrical bodies, red flags. It is not necessary to secure heavy loads. This is incorrect. But let's come to this point. Let me show you here in the ebook. For example, this is what it is talking about that you can project your load forward up to 0.5 meter and the height of the vehicle should be 2.5 meter. This is what we have done in the question over here. That loads more than 2.5 meter high may not project forward by more than 50 centimeter. Projection forward and backwards. So forward projection is 50 centimeter. Backward projection is 1 meter. Height forward is 2.50 meter and the height backwards in order to label it with red signal is 1.5 meter. So this you have to remember. 50 centimeter forward, 1 meter rear. Height forward is 2.50 meter. Height backward is 1.50 meter. What can be used to secure loads carried in a car? The tensioning belt you can use, luggage net, anti-slip net. You can use anything. What should you remember when loading luggage into a car luggage compartment? I should secure the luggage against slipping. This is clear that it should not slip or skid. Store the warning triangle in an easy accessible place. Yes, in case of accident happens or your breakdown of your vehicle, you should know where your warning triangle is and place heavy luggage at the bottom because this will provide more stability. During a break, you find out that one of the lashing straps has torn. What do you do? Continue your trip because the slipping load will be caught by the side panels. This is wrong. Continue your trip when the load is secured by other sufficient securing means. This is correct. Continue your trip after the lashing strap has been replaced. Either you have to replace this lashing strap. If you don't have any further lashing strap, then you have to use some other means to secure the load. Let me show you here. For example, if a strapping breaks, you must replace it or secure the load with other secured means before continuing the journey. What must you remember when loading a trailer? The load must be securely packed. This is clear. Must not project more than one meter beyond the rear reflectors unless specially marked. This we have seen. One meter beyond the rear reflector, then you have to mark them with the special markings, such as bright red sign, bright red flag, a cylindrical body, a red lamp, a red reflector. Must not project more than one meter beyond the front of the towing vehicle. This is wrong. Do the requirements for properly securing of loads apply to all small transporters? Yes, they apply to all small transporters. So it is a crystal clear answer. They only apply to small transporters without separation wall to the loading space. This is wrong. They apply to all small transporters. So whenever they are carrying load, they should be secured. You are entering a public road, example from field or building site, and considerably soil the road. Who is responsible for eliminating this traffic obstruction? Since you have caused it, so you are the one who is responsible. The competent road building authority? No. You as you have caused it. The person living along the section of the road? No. Let me show you here. By the way, even while leaving a field or the construction site, if the roads gets very muddy, driver is responsible for removing the traffic blocks. So you are the one who has to remove this traffic obstruction because you have caused them. Up to what height is load not allowed to project over the front of the vehicle? So up to what height? Up to a height of 2.5 meter. Let me also show you here that load must not project beyond the vehicle up to height of 2.5 meter. So this is what over here. What must you do when transporting bicycles on the roof of your car? Avoid driving at high speed. This is clear because it's for the safety of you and for others. Safely attach holding devices and bicycle, yes. Regularly check the fixing devices, yes. What must you ensure before setting off on a journey in your car? That you have an adequate view to the rear, yes. That the passengers can put on the existing safety belts, yes. That no objects, example, first aid kit, road, atlas, camera, are lying loose on the rear passenger shelf, yes. So you have to make sure that everything is secured and the passengers, they are wearing their seat belts and you also have an adequate view to the rear. How must a load projecting more than one meter beyond the rear reflectors of the vehicle be marked in darkness? By a red light and red rear reflector. Let me show you again. So as from one meter, the projecting load must be made identifiable in the day by bright red sign, bright red flag, a cylindrical body, in the dark by red lamp and a red reflector. In what sequence may each continue driving? So what we see over here, there is a priority road sign and then there is an additional road sign which shows how the course of the road flows. So the first priority is for the cyclist. Why is it so? Because he is the one who is following the course of the road, course of the priority road. 
and then we are the ones why because we are on the right side of the yellow car and in the last yellow car it will proceed so the option is cyclist me and the yellow car is the correct one what can be the effect of an overload of only 20 percent even an excess load of 20 percent can cause excessive strain on the brakes a deterioration in the strain behavior and damage to sporting parts. Now look at the options. Steering may become worse, yes. The brakes may be overstrained, yes. There may be too much strain on the load bearing parts of the vehicle. This is also correct. All the options are the correct ones. You want to transport your holiday luggage on the roof of your fully occupied car. What must you observe? So you have to observe the vehicle's manufacturer roof load specifications in the operating manual the gross vehicle weight rating of my car. The roof load specifications contained in the registration certificate part one. There is no such roof load specifications in registration certificate one, but you have to look into the manufacturer specifications and your gross vehicle weight rating of your car. You want to transport a load on the roof of your car. How will this influence the handling of your car? The acceleration power will be reduced, yes. The braking distance will be extended, yes. The susceptibility to crosswinds will be reduced, no. The susceptibility to crosswinds will be increased. What must you be aware of if you want to transport the load? The load may not cause avoidable noise, yes, otherwise you will be distracted. The load must be secured, yes, otherwise it will keep flying around when you are driving. The load may have individual bars projecting out the side, though. The load should be secure in case if it's projecting out to the side, you have to mark it with some special labels so that it's visible for the other traffic users. What must you do to avoid endangering others by equipment or load which has fallen off your vehicle? Depending on the situation, remove the parts yourself, yes. Proceed and inform the nearest municipal office, no. Secure the danger spot and immediately inform the road service or police, yes. Let me also show you in the ebook. If the vehicle equipment or items of cargo have fallen from the vehicle and could jeopardize others, create a danger to others, the driver must remove the parts himself. The danger zone must be secured and the road maintenance service or police must be informed promptly if the parts cannot be removed by the driver. If the items of cargo have fallen from the vehicle, it's the duty of driver to remove them. And if it's not possible for the driver to remove them, then the driver should inform police or the road maintenance service. When operating a vehicle, what must you observe regarding the vehicle height? I have to ascertain the actual height of the load protruding beyond the external bodywork of the vehicle. Yes, this is correct. I have to observe the restraints applicable to the actual height. Yes, I have to ascertain the actual height of the vehicle. The important thing is you have to make sure for everything related to the height of the vehicle. Because I don't know if you have seen those underpasses where it is written like only this much height of the vehicle is allowed to pass through this underpass. Therefore, you have to keep in mind everything regarding to the actual height of your vehicle. From what height it is permitted for loads to project up to 50 cm in front of your vehicle up to the height of 2.50 meter. Let me show you here. So this is the figure. So up to 2.5 meter, 0.5 meter can go in front. You want to transport a load. What must you be aware of when doing so? The vehicle's road safety may not be negatively affected. Yes, you have to make sure that the load is secured. The load must not impede me while driving. Yes, the load should not disturb you. The load may not shift or fall over during the journey. Yes, so you have to secure the load. What load securing equipment is to be used in the car? Safety nets, you can use chocks. No, chocks you use for parking on the downhill slopes or under the wheels, right? It's not used for load securing. Lashing straps, of course, you can use lashing straps. So this completes our 28 questions related to the topic goods transport, which falls under the main topic of driving solar motor vehicles and trains transporting passengers and goods. Thanks for watching. If you have liked my video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. If you're interested in any particular topic, please feel free to write in comment section. Take care. See you next time.